case five. I think we might get done here. I, it's possible we'll go over a few minutes. This one is um, a 10 year old boy with a nodule on the palmar surface of the hand. Who would like to oh, take I, this? I can take this one. Um, so this is a pretty well circumscribed nodule. Yep. It has a very heterogeneous appearance to it. Um, and it looks like there's some calcification there. Like that's what those darker areas are. Um, they're not really like well delineated though. They're kind of amorphous looking. Um, and it does look like there's a little bit of like sort of palisading around them from these Ooh, really, yeah. really plump looking cells. Yep. Um, there are some giant cells or like some multinucleated cells in there as well. And it looked to me like there were some areas of like more chondroid looking differentiation. Yes. Um, so I think all that couples with the, the history of a young person with like a nodule on the palm of their hand, I was thinking this is a calcifying apneurotic fibroma. Yes, very good. You nailed it. This is a about as good as you can ask for example and this slide is a courtesy of one of my awesome soft tissue mentors dr mark edgar who uh, along with sharon weiss trained me during my fellowship at emory and um, mark uh, let me borrow this and some other slides for scanning so thank you very much mark i really appreciate it because this is really just a just a perfect example so yeah these occur these are really quite rare i've only seen a, a handful of them in my training and practice um, they uh, tend to occur in young people, often like in the 5 to 15 year old range, although occasionally you can see them in young adults. I think I, I, think I saw one once at a 30 year old, if I recall. And um, the classic finding is just like you described. You have not islands of various amounts of calcification, and those islands usually have kind of a chondroid appearance. So they look kind of cartilage or mixohyaline, chondromyxoid kind of appearance with variable amount of calcification and then around the outside those little round chondroid cells really line up and like i like how you said it they palisade sometimes they almost form these little like rows like spokes on a bicycle wheel you know kind of uh pushing outwards and then as you get further away from the edge of the nodule look what happens it transitions and like you said it's kind of a biphasic like it's got different patterns you got these chondroid islands with uh, cal calcification and then in between look what happens you get these spindle cell areas so this kind of swirls away into what looks more like fascicles of fibroblastic cells almost like the fascicles of like say fibromatosis only much thinner and not nearly as broad as like you would see in a in a true fibromatosis so that is the the, what the features that you're going to get the calcium the myxoid to chondroid areas, the round cells palisading around, and then these nice fascicles in between. Sometimes there can be abundant calcification or abundant cartilage. That can happen more often in when you see them in older patients or longer standing, that they tend to get more calcified and more um, cartilage metaplasia in them over time. And in those cases, it can be challenging. I did see one that, that, um, that was was not recognized at first until it recurred because it then had some classic areas, but because it had a lot of cartilage, I think it was thought to be like synovial chondromatosis or something, but then it came back 10 years later and it, we actually had some classic areas. And so when there's a lot of cartilage and not classic features, it can occasionally be challenging to recognize. And just like anytime there's calcification or even bone formation, uh, osteoclastic giant cells can show up just like we see here. And that goes with, I mean, really, whenever there's bone and calcs around, it's not unusual to see uh, osteoclasts there. They, they home in for that, you know? So uh, this is a really, really good example. And again, if you're watching this at home, I'm gonna put a link to the digital slides so you can really take your time exploring all of the features. This is what to burn into your brain as a, just a true example of calcifying aponeurotic fibroma. They can recur locally, have a tendency to recur locally, even though they're not malignant. Um, and I think that's true of a lot of things on the hands and feet in the soft tissue world that they have a, a bit of more of a tendency to come back because they tend to be closely attached to the tendons and tendon sheaths. Um, but yeah, this one can be a recurrence and be problematic in that way. But uh, to my knowledge, they're not usually like aggressive recurrences. They just, you know, like I saw that one that grew back 10 years later. So, you know, the patient had to come back in and get it removed, but he didn't have any real problem. And uh, more recently, a, a gene fusion has been described in these. It's FN1. Uh, fused with EGF. Now I've never used that in practice because like I said, I've only seen a few and the ones I've seen had diagnostic features. But um, in, in my reading, like in the new WHO book, it mentions it, you don't normally need that. But if you had a difficult case that had a lot of uh, you know chondroid or, or calcified areas and you couldn't see the classic findings, you could potentially consider doing a, a test for that fusion. So perfect example, calcifying aponeurotic fibroma. Excellent job, good work.